there are crazy things going on in the stock market right now and you can't sit here and tell me that there's not and in this video i'm going to prove it first off what i'll show you we have something called a cpi report 8.2 percent so that brings the question is peak inflation over or is it going to get worse some people some people would rather there to be a lot of inflation for it to happen all at once and for the fed to just keep pounding rates and then that way it can go down easy like a smooth landing is what they like to call it it doesn't always work that way and i'm going to show you what the spy did today if you have not already heard the news the spy did a five percent swing the cpi report comes out okay right here cpi report bam that is a two percent hammer down market opens and it rips dude like it not only just goes green First off, it, it came down 2%. This was down 2%. Like, we're in a 2% down day, okay? This actually comes all the way up. We end the day almost 3%. Yo, this is crazy. Like, this is actually crazy. And now, so I'm going to react to one video. Prices tumbling today following the release of the latest hot inflation report. Investors have been closely watching the data for clues on whether the Fed will continue its aggressive rate hikes to try to curb persistent... Bitcoin crypto, it just it's gonna keep following the spy and keep following the Fed until there's some kind of decoupulation. Like there has to be some kind of event that makes these two break from each other, you know, because that's just the environment we're in. And the reason that they are so interconnected and people just I don't know why people try to just say it's not. The reason that it is so interconnected is because of the stock market people, these big institutions are coming into crypto. So once they start regulating crypto like how they've been doing, if if you have not noticed, the SPY and Bitcoin have been hand in hand for the past year, at least. Like you, you can't even deny it. Inflation. Bitcoin dropped under $19,000 to its lowest level in October. By noon Eastern, it had almost fully recovered and was trading... Last night, I was selling shit October. last night. I was low-key scared. Ether also found new lows for the month, but traded lower by just 3.2% by noon. And Cardano dropped by about 2.7%. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First, the U.S. Treasury Department faces another lawsuit over its decision to sanction crypto mixing service Tornado Cash. In a blog post yesterday, crypto research and advocacy group Coinsight. Tornado Cash. I mean, yo, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna react to this, and then we're just gonna go skip forward and just find where they're talking about the stock market. This Tornado Cash shit. I mean, yo, if you're using Tornado Cash, like you're doing some shady shit. Like, it don't take like two and two to put to make four. You know, that's if you're using Tornado Cash, you are you are an expert in money laundering, most likely. Like shit the lawsuit, arguing that the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control, which enforces U.S. sanctions, does not have the authority to ban a smart contract, and that Americans... I want to find someone talking about, like, the stock market and, like, what it did today. Um, let's look up stock market. I at least want to find one video for you guys, just react to it. Back to the market sell-off, getting milder by the moment here, off of that uh, hotter than expected CPI. Let's bring in All Spring Global Investments head of Active Equity Ann Maletti and Barclays head of Global Inflation Linked Research Mike Pond. Thank you guys for being with us. And I just wonder, very short term, uh, the bounce this morning, uh, the VIX lower. Is it your sense that the CPI internals are getting a second look? Uh, what happened this morning? Do you think? Well, I do think that you know, although the trend was disappointing not seeing quick enough deceleration in inflation. It doesn't change too much of the outlook. Certainly doesn't change what we thought would happen in November. As Steve Leesman pointed out, we are likely to see a bigger impact in the December, um, in the December action from the Fed. So that might be disappointing. But I think investors, certainly our investment teams, have much anticipated that the Fed's gonna do some really hard work and focus on all right guys i just don't see how it's good like i don't see how us having a bounce that big is like good for the economy in 2008 there were a lot of up and down moments where you would have a three percent day the next day you could be down five percent what they need to do to fight inflation even at the expense of the economy so multiple compression has been really big about 30 percent we are starting to see that earnings estimates, you know, come down. I think 15 of the last 16 weeks, and we're seeing it again this morning. 
So a lot of the work is already being priced into the market. And so seeing a small bounce after the negative print isn't that shocking. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like you think the market is... Like, that's what I, it's like it's really not that shocking. I saw it this morning. I saw the market being down like 2%. I went back to sleep. I don't know about you guys. I went back to sleep. I was like, I'm not buying the dip on this. Like, I should have traded it. I should have. It probably would have been easy money. If you got SPY at the lows today, if you were able to catch SPY at the lows this morning, some people did $20 into, I think it was 3500 They did $20 into $3,500. Like, if you wrote it bottom to top, which never happens. Like, you have to be an absolutely psych. You have to be a psychopath to hit that play. You have to be the 1% motherfucker. Maybe too much inflation next year, but not enough over the longer term. That's right. The market's still priced for around 3% inflation as we look into, into next year, so on a forward-looking basis. Uh, but then out the curve, it's only pricing in levels that are barely consistent with the Fed's forecast from the downside. Uh, so we think the, that the disinflation risk from an overshoot from the Fed, from the move in the dollar, from lower transportation costs, lower commodity prices, it runs the risk of too low inflation next year, but the structural factors in the market, such as deglobalization, energy transition costs, actually raise structural inflation pressures, which we don't think the market is pricing in from an inflation risk premium standpoint. Uh, let me follow up on that, given you are the head of global inflation link research. Michael, what about the, uh, you know, the services component here, up 0.8% seems to be giving a number of people real pause. I'm just curious to get your reaction to it. Uh, and whether, in fact, it does, given services inflation. Yo, while we're here, yo, if, if you just want to show me some support, if you want to show me some love, drop a like, drop a comment. Uh, let me know what you think. Like, let me know if you think this is a uh, a sustainable bounce. I don't even know, like, how to explain this shit. This, this is just crazy to me. Just let me know what kind of bounce you think this is. Do you think we are coming back down to new lows? Do you think this is the bottom bottom? Are you a bottom caller? Let me know can prove stickier over time mean the fed perhaps goes higher longer right so clearly we're seeing that long discussed shift from uh consumer uh buying of goods to service i was not happy with etsy today etsy I, I love etsy stock bro that shit was ugly today like that was uncalled for this goods price inflation was zero uncalled in, in today's for print, but services uh was much stronger at, at 0.8 a lot of that was shelter jp morgan chase i guess they're up after they uh dropped kanye that's sort of wild very wild and shelter as we all know is a lagging indicator of what's going on in the rental market by about nine months but that doesn't matter because the Fed is focused on realized inflation data, not forward looking as it used to be because they were humbled by their inflation forecast over the past year. I guess that almost wraps up the video. If you guys want to send me a message on Instagram, if you have any questions about this, if you just have any thoughts that you want to give me, any video ideas, etc., send me a message on the gram, bro. Like we, we chill like that. And I hope I see you next video. Peace guys.